2. God and Nature Nature is, in a limited sense, the physical habit of God. The conduct or action of God is qualified and provisionally modified by the experimental plans and the evolutionary patterns of a local universe, a constellation, a system, or a planet. God acts in accordance with a well-defined, unchanging, immutable law throughout the widespreading master universe, but he modifies the patterns of his action so as to contribute to the coordinate and balanced conduct of each universe, constellation, system, planet, and personality in accordance with the local objects, aims, and plans of the finite projects of evolutionary unfolding. Therefore, nature, as mortal man understands it, presents the underlying foundation and fundamental background of a changeless deity and his immutable laws, modified by, fluctuating because of, and experiencing upheavals through the working of the local plans, purposes, patterns, and conditions which have been inaugurated and are being carried out by the local universe, constellation, system, and planetary forces and personalities. For example, as God's laws have been ordained in Nebadon, they are modified by the plans established by the Creator Son and Creative Spirit of this local universe, and in addition to all this, the operation of these laws has been further influenced by the errors, defaults, and insurrections of certain beings resident upon your planet and belonging to your immediate planetary system of Satania. Nature is a time-space resultant of two cosmic factors. First, the immutability, perfection, and rectitude of Paradise Deity. And second, the experimental plans, executive blunders, insurrectionary errors, incompleteness of development, and imperfection of wisdom of the extra-Paradise creatures, from the highest to the lowest. Nature, therefore, carries a uniform, unchanging, majestic, and marvelous thread of perfection from the circle of eternity, but in each universe, on each planet, and in each individual life, this nature is modified, qualified, and perchance marred by the acts, the mistakes, and the disloyalties of the creatures of the evolutionary systems and universes, and therefore must nature ever be of a changing mood, whimsical withal, though stable underneath and varied in accordance with the operating procedures of a local universe. Nature is the perfection of paradise divided by the incompletion, evil, and sin of the unfinished universes. This quotient is thus expressive of both the perfect and the partial, of both the eternal and the temporal. Continuing evolution modifies nature by augmenting the content of paradise perfection and by diminishing the content of the evil, error, and disharmony of relative reality. God is not personally present in nature or in any of the forces of nature, for the phenomenon of nature is the superimposition of the imperfections of progressive evolution and, sometimes, the consequences of insurrectionary rebellion upon the paradise foundations of God's universal law. As it appears on such a world as Urantia, nature can never be the adequate expression, the true representation, the faithful portrayal of an all-wise and infinite God. Nature on your world is a qualification of the laws of perfection by the evolutionary plans of the local universe. What a travesty to worship nature because it is in a limited, qualified sense pervaded by God, because it is a phase of the universal and, therefore, divine power. Nature also is a manifestation of the unfinished, the incomplete, the imperfect outworkings of the development growth, and progress of a universe experiment in cosmic evolution. The apparent defects of the natural world are not indicative of any such corresponding defects in the character of God. Rather are such observed imperfections merely the inevitable stop moments in the exhibition of the ever-moving reel of infinity picturization. It is these very defect interruptions of perfection continuity which make it possible for the finite mind of material man to catch a fleeting glimpse of divine reality in time and space. The material manifestations of divinity appear defective to the evolutionary mind of man only because mortal man persists in viewing the phenomena of nature through natural eyes, human vision unaided by Marancha Mota or by revelation, its compensatory substitute on the worlds of time. And nature is marred, her beautiful face is scarred, her features are seared by the rebellion, the misconduct, 
the misthinking of the myriads of creatures who are a part of nature, but who have contributed to her disfigurement in time. No, nature is not God. Nature is not an object of worship.